I've been wanting to do a rainbow look, so I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so this is another one that I created over on Twitch. If you ever want to see us live, the link is in the description. So I was choosing eight colours to make a rainbow piece this time. So I started with the standard red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, so I did two sort of blues. I did a light blue and a dark blue. And then I did a light purple and a dark purple. However, there was some conversations on stream regarding um, my colour choices. Um, and I did some white. So I started off like this and then I did bow down to peer pressure. But let's see how we started. So this isn't just shy of an 8x8 square canvas. And I used chalk pencil to mark mine. It's so easy to remove. Once your paint is dry, just a little dab of water and it's gone. So I draw my eight lines, my diagonals and my centre points. And then I have a second chalk pencil that I'm going to use in this compass. And I realised that I hadn't got my lazy Susan out. These are just draw liners that mean things don't move around. So just using my compass, creating a variety sizes of circles. Just keep going until I've filled up the canvas because you never know how much you're going to need. Um, and then what I tend to do is I take a microfiber cloth and I just wipe off the excess chalk dust. And what that means is it's very faint, but you can still see the lines and you don't have the big white marks there. And then we're going to start planning out our design. Um, and everyone decided that I need to have a pink in my rainbow, even though there's no pink in the rainbow. Uh, but I suppose for this, it does make the most sense. So I started in the center with a white dot and then using one of my tiny dotting tools i am going to do one dot of each color going around the rainbow on the eight points i will start with the first four it just makes spacing better even though i've got the lines i like to do it this way so i know everything is nice and neat i'm going to add a white dot in between each of those colored dots slightly larger and then we're going to go back to doing the colors again with a larger tool and i'm going to do a dot and then i'm going to drag it down to a little point so it looks like a teardrop almost i'm again going to do that in all the colors but i realized i wasn't sure of my spacing and because I wanted to make it even all the way around, I drew an extra circle with my chalk pencil and then I knew exactly where to dot on the opposite sides. Because we are doing the colours, um, it's not a very quick, simple dot, 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 because I have to change colours, wipe the tool each time. So by drawing that extra line, it just makes sure that I get it perfect. Now, as you can see there, I made a little error and I just have a little needle tool that I use to remove the excess paint. And I'm using the tiniest dotting tools to drag these dots out. So as you can see... I dot with one of the rods and then I use the orange dotting tool, which is the smallest one on my set, to just pull that into a point. So we're going to continue round and do these in all of the colours. Um, now with these drags, you can do just a thin line, which is the first pull. Or if you watch, I kind of round those edges so it looks more like a teardrop rather than a straight line. You can do either. You choose which is best for your design. Once we've done this, we're going to add another row of white. Um, what you're going to see is the colours sit on those eight grid lines that I drew and the white dots are always in the middle. So we're going to have a border of white in between each colour to really help it pop. And then we're going to do what is called walking the dots. So you do a dot and then you move along a line. In this case, the line is curved. And as you move along, there is less paint on your tool. So the dots get smaller and smaller. And then we get interrupted by Magrat. She does like to come down on Twitch to say hi. And I have to work around her because obviously it is her desk. If you ever want to come and see her, just pop over to Twitch and give her some love. But there you go. You can see now it's one dab of paint to do the entire way round. And that's why you get the smaller dots. That's called walking the dots. Then we're going to do some coloured dots on top. And then we're going to do some drags. Now these drags could be called a comma stroke in official paintings. I like to call them swooshes or dot drags so you do the dot and then you sort of drag it round so similar to walking the dots as the paint comes off the tool there is less so you get smaller dots with the drag as you pull it round there's less paint and so the drag gets to a smaller and smaller point once those are done we're going to add a white dot on top and this white in the rows of colors just helps to really lift all the colors and make them pop in your eyes um, especially when they dry some of the darker colors like the red and the pink get quite dark so this white helps them pop again in between we're doing a larger white dot what you want to do is choose your tool before you start check it's going to fit in every space if you've got it evenly spaced it should do but i always like to do a quick dry check to make sure that your dot is going to fit in the place you're trying to put it then we go with one of the larger rods. Now these rods are just acrylic rods. 
um, they go up to 15 mil or half an inch is the largest one I currently have and then the really tiny ones are called dotting or ball tools they're usually used for nail varnish because they are very very tiny again we're going to do some dots and pull them out to a point again even though I've got it all sorted I like to do the four corners first well not the four corners the four compass points first just so that I know everything is opposite and level and lined up and as you can see I'm using that circle that I drew to make sure the center of my dot is on that point and that way I know it's even all the way around again Magret likes to come in and say hi if you notice there is a slight smudge there next to the large purple dot it's okay you can just scrape that off and go over it with the black gesso that we painted on the background I'm going to go around and do all of these, trying desperately not to get cat hair in it. She does like to shed some fur into all of my projects. Um, <laughs> I do try and remove them as much as I can. Um, and then once we've done that, we're going to do another set of walking the dots. And I like doing a combination of dots, walking the dots, the drags, creating some other shapes. Sometimes you can drag both sides of a dot out and then you get a really interesting look. I do apologise, it goes out of focus. When Magrat is on the desk, the camera gets confused. When Magrat flicks her ear, the camera's like, oh, movement, I'm going to focus on that. And so sometimes it unfortunately goes a little bit out of focus. Now, these are what I call my Mickey Mouse ears. Whenever I have a large dot and I do two smaller dots right next to it, especially if they are the same colour, it can look like a Mickey Mouse head with the ears. So I don't know if that's what the official name is, but that's what I like to call them. Uh, those names that you see popping up is just a way that we welcome chatters over on Twitch. Again, if you want to join us, the link is in the description. Added that coloured dot on top. I wanted to do them all the same size, so I did them at the same point so I could remember which tool I was using. And then using one of my larger nail dotting tools, I am doing the walking the dots. Now, as you can see, I do all of one side first and then do all of the other side. I find I get in a better rhythm that way because I can follow the pattern of my hand. So I do all of one side is the same pattern and then all of the other side is the same pattern. You don't have to do it this way. You do it however works best for you. It just gives me the nicest look in my opinion. Again, we're gonna add another white dot. Now with these larger dots, this is the largest one. This is the 15 mil half an inch dot. Um, you have to be very careful because if you push down too hard, you end up with a weird shape rather than a nice domed dot. So when you are dotting, you want to be gentle rather than pushing down hard. Then we're going to do another couple of swipes around those white dots, going down to that line. Again, Magrat popped in. As you can see, the camera is focusing on her head, not on the artwork. But, you know, she is the star after all do have to push her out of the way sometimes because she's definitely a crafter's cat she likes the smell of paint and glue and so I have to be careful again I'm just using my needle tool here to lengthen a couple of these lines the first couple that I did I did really short and then the rest I did down to that line from the previous circle so I just extended them slightly now here you can see I'm doing another large dots and I'm pulling it out but I'm only just curving that edge on the ones earlier, I made them look almost like full raindrops, whereas this one, I'm keeping that point, a very defined line, separate from the circle. And I'm only just curving the edges. So you can see there the different shapes you can create by how you blend them together. Okay, so we're now approaching the outer edges of our canvas so we need to really think about how we're going to finish this design off it depends how you want to do it obviously i can't go any further with the light blue the lilac the yellow or the red because they are right at the edge of the canvas but the other colors the orange the pink the darker blue and the green go into a corner so you can choose whether you want to keep this circle design just on that circle or whether you want to extend it like i am going to do Again, we did some walking the dots. I like how the white contrasts around the colour. I think it just looks really nice and bright. Um, again, I did one side and then I went back and did the other side. You do it however works best for you. And where I've got larger dots to go around, I am using my largest of the nail dotting tools. So this blue one has the largest ball on the end of it. So that's why I'm using it for these outer dots, which are the larger dots, so that I have enough paint to go all the way around them. If I use, say, the orange one or the pink one, there wouldn't be enough paint to go all the way around these larger circles. We're then going to add the last couple of drags. And you could leave it here and you'd have a really nice circular design once we add the final white dots. But I like to fill my canvas and I, I, 
sometimes I regret it, sometimes I love it. I never know when to stop. I just want to keep adding and adding and adding with these designs because I really enjoy it. So once we've done these drags, I am going to add in my corners as if there was another row. But if you wanted to keep it just as a circular design rather than go into those corners, that is also something you can do. That's something you need to make a decision on and decide how you want to make yours go. Like I said at the start, you could plan this all out before you start. I tend to just go with the flow and see where it takes me. So I've added in the largest white dots now, again, using that big orange rod, which is the largest one I currently own, and then dragging out those corner dots just to finish off the design. I really, really like this design. Hello, Magrat. Um, I really, really like this design. I just went through and added a few other colored dots here and there along the um, rows just to sort of fill in any gaps that I saw. You can do however you want with these. This is the, the, pleasant, the pleasant thing about all of this is you decide exactly how you want it. So as you can see, those four in the corners, there isn't a yellow one, there isn't a red one because they are on the edge of the canvas. But I just like to fill those corners with something as if the pattern continues beyond the canvas. Added in the final few white dots and then yeah, I mean, we're good to go. Once this has dried completely, I will take a wet cloth or spray it with some water and use my microfiber cloth to remove all of those chalk lines. Then let that dry completely. And then I tend to use a varnish over the top. You could resin, you could varnish, it's totally up to you finished design if you have enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed um i really like how this turned out if you would like more dotting videos if you want tips and tricks let me know down in the comments and i will see you on the next one keep crafting bye